Prince Hans from Frozen is widely regarded as one of the worst Disney villains of all time, and I've heard a multitude of reasons as to why that is, ranging from there not needing to be a villain in Frozen, to the fact that he was only a villain for about 10 minutes, to the fact that he is somewhat counterproductive throughout the entire movie, where at one point he's saving Elsa, and at another point he's trying to kill her, both within the span of 30 minutes. And with his humiliating depictions in both Frozen Fever and the Once Upon a Time show, it seemed as though that Hans would join the ranks of the two-dimensional Disney villains, joining the likes of people like Yzma, Scar, Shere Khan, Gaston, etc. However, it seems as though that Disney had other plans for Hans' character, because in 2016 they released a book by Elizabeth Rudnick titled A Frozen Heart. And ever since then, people who have read the book have claimed that it makes Hans a much more tragic character. So much so that it seems to outright redeem him. And you see, it's that last point that really stuck with me. Could there really be a book out there that changes Hans this much to the point of people calling for his redemption? Those are the questions I wanted to find out as I decided to pick up a copy of the book for myself. And now that I've read it, well, let's just say that there's a lot to talk about. So, without further ado, let's get started. Now, probably the best place to start in this video is Hans' backstory, which was only lightly touched upon in the movie. All we really know about him is that he's the 13th son of the King and Queen of the Southern Isles, as well as that some of his brothers are pretty mean towards him, as a couple of them actually pretended he was invisible for two years. But beyond that, we really don't know that much about him. Heck, I don't even think the movie mentioned his last name. But Hans is not a stranger. Oh yeah? What's his last name? Uh, of the Southern Isles. In case you're wondering, it was Westergaard. And that's one of the first things we learn about him in the book. What else do we learn from the book, you may ask? Well, how about some of his mistreatment from his family included pushing him off a moving cart and throwing glassware at him, having only one of his 12 brothers actually treat him like a human being. He considers himself a throwaway prince and son. He's become so numb to physical pain that he actually considers it pleasant. His main goal for going to Arendelle and becoming king was so he could never see his family again. And if all that wasn't enough to get you to feel bad for Hans, he actually spent three years before the movie just working for his father following his every direction, which included silencing those who would speak out against his father, just so he could be somewhat sure that his dad would send him to Arendelle when the coronation came. And this version of Hans is extremely methodical. He prides himself on knowing how to manipulate others. So the fact that not even Hans knew if he could get on his dad's good side speaks volumes about his father. And that's not even mentioning the fact that his father is well known to burn down the homes of his enemies. And that might my friends, is what Hans's real backstory is. So now, let's move on to part two. Once Hans finally gets to Arendelle, the first thing he thinks about is how to get to Elsa. But while he's thinking, he overhears someone talking to a princess, and that immediately catches his attention. So, he makes a plan that when the princess gets near him, He's going to put his horse in a position that will definitely get the princess to notice him. And that's how we get this cute little scene. However, he would soon find out that there is one teensy teensy tiny little problem with his plan. Anyone want to guess what that is? That's not Princess Elsa. That's Princess Anna, her sister. And I mean honestly, who could have guessed? And while on the surface, Hans looks calm, cool, and collected, Below the surface, Hans is anything but. He even compares the situation to some kind of sick joke that his brothers would pull. But eventually he starts warming up to the idea of getting close to Anna instead of Elsa once he sees how cold she is. <laughs> but later that night, Anna and Hans meet up again, they have a cute little musical number, and Hans ends up proposing to Anna. All according to plan, right? Well, not actually. This is one of the only times in the book when Hans is not in complete control. Him proposing to Anna was an accident. Now let me clear something up. Hans' plan was always going to be to marry a princess, whether it was Elsa or Anna. He just didn't intend to do it that soon. Now whether or not that means Hans actually fell for Anna in that moment, I can't be sure. Mostly because the book never outright tells us whether or not Hans actually fell for Anna. But either way, Hans goes along with the engagement, Elsa freaks out about it, Anna goes after her, and Hans is left in charge of Arendelle. And to Hans, this was his time to shine. 
time to prove to everyone in the kingdom, as well as himself, that he in fact would be a good king. So Hans tries to make sure that everyone in Arendelle stays warm by giving them warm food, blankets, and a place to stay inside the castle. He even manipulates a group of political figures, including the Duke of Weaselton, to helping out. And he does this by using a technique where you act like a mirror to the other person, copying their tone and body language in order to seem closer to them. And if you rewatch Frozen, you can actually see a lot of instances where Hans uses something like this, which is both really cool and really terrifying. Moving on with the plot, Anna's horse comes back to Arendelle, Hans takes a team to go and find her, and they end up at Elsa's castle, where they then proceed to be attacked by Marshmallow. And it's here where Hans makes an uh, interesting comparison, where he says that compared to his father when he's angry, Marshmallow seems like a big cuddly bunny. Do with that information what you will. Once Marshmallow is defeated, Hans goes inside the castle only to be greeted with the sight of Elsa absolutely destroying the two Wesselton guards. He delivers the don't be the monster they fear you are line, and right when he sees that one of the guards is about to shoot Elsa, he saves her because he doesn't know if Elsa can actually stop the storm. If she can't, oh well, we'll just kill her then. But if she can, then why would you kill her? So then Elsa gets knocked out, she's brought back to the castle, and when she tells Hans that she genuinely cannot stop the storm, he believes her. But just as he's trying to figure out what to do next, Anna comes back to the castle and requests that she kiss him because Elsa froze her heart. And this is the moment where all the pieces start to fall in place for Hans. He doesn't need Anna anymore. Elsa is going to die, and so will she. Even the dignitary from one of the other kingdoms says that if Elsa and Anna die, Hans is the only thing Arendelle has left that can compare to royalty. And to Hans, this was the ultimate reward, meant for him due to all of his hard work, and now he was going to take what was rightfully his. So, after breaking up with Anna in the most brutal way possible, he goes to find Elsa and kill her. Now, an important note to make here is that Hans is not a killer, and he never has been. Hans says that killing made you a brute, and it removed all of your options, both of which he hated, but this was something he knew he had to do, for this was the last step to seal his victory and finally become king. So what if Elsa ran away? He would find her. He would always find her no matter where she hid. And once he finally did, he used her love of her sister to finally quench the monster within her and stop her once and for all if it were not for Anna. Dear viewers, you know how this story ends. It doesn't end with Hans becoming king. It ends with the two sisters reuniting and figuring out their love for each other. And even as Hans was being sent away back to the Southern Isles, he still couldn't process it. How could this happen to him? To him, Every time that he tried to use love, it just resulted in everyone calling him weak. Yet, for these sisters, love had turned into their greatest strength. He couldn't fathom what it meant. Quote from the book. If only I had acted just a moment sooner, Hans had thought. Then, they would have never known forgiveness. Never felt the love of a sibling again. Just like me just like my entire life. Elsa would have been dead. Anna would have followed soon after. And I would have taken what I deserve. So that is Hans's full story. And I know it does deconfirm the theory that the trolls brainwashed him, but being honest, I really like this backstory for Hans. But am I saying this version of Hans is an angel? Of course not. He still tried to kill two innocent people. I don't care what kind of tragic backstory you have. That is not okay. But like many other tragic villains in today's media, it does give Hans the chance to redeem himself. To make himself a better person and make up for all the mistakes of his past. Now, personally, I think some sort of story that would fit this would be a Southern Isles invasion into Arendelle but that's just my personal preference. And before we end today's video, there are just two more things I want to talk about. The first is that Disney refuses to acknowledge this book. I've heard that there are some statements in the book that like directly conflict with the movie and maybe that's why. But seriously, Disney, you need to get on this story now. Like even Hans's voice actor has confirmed in an interview that Hans was supposed to be a redeemable character. 
Yet in Frozen 2, Elsa makes the remark that Hans is irredeemable, which, like, why would you get rid of this story? It's literally perfect for a redemption arc. Also, there's this picture from the Hyperion Frozen performance in 2016, a year after this book was released. And in this picture, all of Hans's family have red hair, while in the book it says that some of Hans's family members are blonde. But at least we know that Frozen 3 is confirmed to be coming out, so who knows, maybe Hans will come back in that movie. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is, just to keep it short, Disney, you need to do better. 2022 proved that other animation studios can beat you. And it's not like I wish you bad or anything. Like, you were a big part of my childhood. But you have to realize, mediocre isn't enough anymore. I know you're going to bounce back. You always do. But this story, it might just be enough to make sure you get the crown again as the top animation studio of 2023 or 2024, whenever Frozen releases. But then again, I am just some random guy who's talking on the internet. So to help me become more than that and get Disney to actually listen to me, be sure to smash that subscribe button. And until next time, goodbye.